Abraha Atzbeha, christened for the legendary eponymous twins of the Aksumite kingdom, once trading with empires extending to Rome, Egypt, India. Then, unimaginably, drought and famine, triggered by extreme deforestation, land degradation and desertification, exacerbated by war. Now, slowly and painstakingly reclaimed to assert pride of place in the battle for food security, Abraha Atzbeha's resurrection has been nothing short of incredible. Over 15 years since rejecting government scheduled resettlement, the community has very clearly reclaimed their lives and livelihoods by implementing water management and land rehabilitation programs. As the soil conservation structures successfully stabilized soil and water flow, natural regeneration of vegetation on the hills was enabled leading to increased soil water infiltration and groundwater recharge. Okay. <laughs> The positive impact on productivity and incomes can be witnessed in the amount of irrigated land which has more than doubled between 2004 and 2007. Community leader Abba Hoy claims he couldn't harvest more than 50 kilograms of teff annually from his farm 10 years ago. Now he gets 500 kilograms and harvests twice a year. <laughs> Women and youth were also mobilized into beekeeping cooperatives, an income generating activity compatible with maintaining vegetative cover in the landscape. High value fruit trees were additionally introduced, which provided a much needed source of nutrition and additional income. The introduction of controlled grazing has dramatically increased the demand and availability of high quality livestock fodder, and some farmers even rent out their Phytherbia albida trees to those who don't have them so they can feed the trees' nutritious pods to their cattle. Supported by external organizations, as well as the government's productive safety net program, detailed knowledge of the benefits of agroforestry, the principles of vegetation management in the upper watersheds, and especially restrictions on free grazing, have unmistakably led to improved soil fertility and productivity for Abraha Atzbeha. Today, 85% of the population have enough food to eat all year round. 
but it isn't realized everywhere. The government has attempted a scaling up of the initiatives that worked well in Abraha Atzbaha to the village of Adi Gudom, less than 100 kilometers away, but so far adoption has been low. Even though the area has approximately 300 millimeters more rainfall and a more favorable agroecological environment, the landscape has remained almost treeless. A major difference between Abraha Atzbaha and Adi Gudom is the management of livestock and its impact on vegetation cover. Soil loss and land degradation are apparent in the landscape. It has proven difficult to enforce policies to exclude livestock from cropland. Until a consensus within the community over controlling livestock grazing can be reached, natural regeneration of vegetation will be limited. Here uh, we are doing so soil water conservation practices more from the upper catchments so that we are integrating with the, the agroforestry. When we say that there is an improvement on, uh, uh, on the agroforestry practice and on the free grazing control, so that we have a lot of uh, indicators. One thing is that when you go out to the site, we are free of uh, no intervention on them, on the animals. We can't see animals or the humans intervention on that. And then when we come to the uh, household level, we are just seeing that the animals or uh, the animals are just using the cat in carrying system. Some practices are already in place to cope with fodder and fuel shortages, such as the establishment of Apicia ficus indica, prickly pear cactus around the land to act as stock proof barriers and a source of fuel, fruit, and vital dry season livestock feed. <laughs> With sharp spines requiring removal before it can be fed to animals, this hardy plant can thrive amongst grazing livestock and provides an important alternative feed during the transition to a controlled livestock grazing system. Understanding such practices provide first steps towards designing integrated agroforestry systems to suit local contexts. Currently, eucalyptus is the dominant species planted in the area, with very few other species available in local nurseries. For delivery of multiple ecosystem services, there needs to be improved access and awareness of other tree species that could satisfy household needs and ameliorate land degradation. Research suggests a number of reasons that explain why agroforestry practices have been successful in one village, but uptake is low in the other. These include time needed for widespread adoption, motivation to act, and local leadership. So the Arbo um, has a successful area we saw uh, has started uh, establishing a collective, collective action to exclude livestock and uh, to enclose the farm so that agroforestry can, uh, can be established has started um, like 15 years ago. Whereas in Adgudam it's just a recent exercise uh, in the past five to seven years. So uh, maybe in 15 years, we'll see more success like what we see in Armatoa. The experience of Adi Gadom demonstrates how fine-scale variation within Tigray region requires us to adapt agroforestry options to suit local circumstances. Variations in context need to be explicitly considered at the outset of developing agroforestry interventions.
and partnering with development organizations to test directly with farmers is essential.